Happy Friday! Hi, I'm Udoka. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Let me just pull up the little intro. Yay! Welcome, welcome, welcome. Get in here. Yes, I'm recording on a Friday. You could say I'm cosplaying as that one chick from Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. Oh yeah, yeah, this one. Roxy, you know this girl? Oh boy, does she know me? <laughs> yeah. What are you talking about? I didn't do that on he purpose, really actually. Um, I just, I'm, I'm trying out different looks because, uh, I'm like reinventing myself or rediscovering myself and on this channel i literally just talk about whatever i want so if you vibe that's how you know to subscribe um and like the video once you actually like it um i talk about like what i said everything and anything that i want um i want to talk one more video about Trisha Paytas and her affirmations. Just one more video. Let's, I want to keep breaking it down. And I wonder if, um, I don't know. I wonder if other people are finding interest in law of attraction again, because I, maybe I'll start talking about it again, but I do want to give a quick mental health update because I just recently came to grips with the fact that I have anxiety on top of the depression, on top of the ADHD. And I have been like aggressively seeking a solution because that's just what I do. And luckily I'm in a place in life now where if there is a solution, as long as there's at least a payment plan, I will get my hands on that solution. I've been researching about microdosing. Um, Oh, what's it called? Psy psilocybin, psilocybin, magic mushrooms. And I have been taking, um, so I have been taking this chocolate. I literally had to, um, fly to a completely different state. So I don't know how to get this sustainably and reliably yet. But wow, oh my gosh, it has been so helpful so far. Like, um, we were at a conference and I was having a panic attack. Um, it was a two day conference. So day one, I had a panic attack. I didn't go back. Day two, I got my hands on this, this one up chocolate and took a microdose portion. And I was able to go to day two of the conference. Um, I was able to handle some work. Then when I, um, the next day we came back home and we had work and we had a wedding to go to. And I was just like, uh, I don't, I don't know. So I microdosed again and had an amazing time. So, this is really interesting. I have never in my life, never in my life, ne I, this is a brand new world for me, this microdosing thing. So I'm just putting it out there. Um, I'm just going to have to try it for some time and do some more research. Unfortunately, these, these methods of taking care of my mental health, which require psychedelics. You know, I use K treatment for my depression and now I'm using freaking magic mushrooms for my anxiety. It's diff very difficult to get your hands on and different states have different laws. And it's unfortunate because this stuff seems to be helping and the research seems to really be leaning towards this shizzle is helping. But, um, you know, we just got to fight for it. The same way people have fought for their miracle Mary Jane. Uh, I guess we just got to keep fighting and keep producing research. Okay, let's 
go to the Trisha Paytas thing. Okay, so I want to talk about these affirmations because like I said in the last video I posted about this, I used to be law of attraction junkie. I knew anything and everything about law of attraction. I was so on it. And the thing is, when you're struggling with mental health, law of attraction is not the solution. Okay. I'm just, I'm just going to say it. If you, and don't get me wrong, this law of attraction manifestation, um, type of philosophies, they can help you if you're applying them in a healthy way. But when you have a mental health issue, you may not be applying it in a healthy way. And if it makes you feel worse, if it makes you feel like you're hiding something under the rug, um, that's when you need to stop. So, um, and I stopped doing law of attraction stuff for a long, long time. I'm just now not getting back into it, but I'm just now uh, re-implementing things like meditation and things like that. I just want to give my two cents on the way Trisha does her affirmations because the way she does her affirmations is... I mean, you, you can do them, you can do them how she does it, but it, it's kind of, let's just, let's just, let's just go into it. Good morning. Let's talk daily affirmations of a first class life. First class tickets for the rest of your life. So the first thing I want to know is what is inspiring her to do first class affirmations? Um, I wonder what happened. I wonder, like something, something happened. Something happened that made her feel like she wasn't first class. But anyway. To any destination, I want, you want, first class houses, first class spouse, First class family, first class kids, first class you. The thing about first class houses, I mean, a first class house, I mean, everybody has their own dream house, but we can kind of envision that, our own version of that. What is a first class husband? What are first class kids? Um, what does that mean? This affirmation could work for her, but it seems like she's recording this so that other people can, you know, save it and listen to it. And it may not work for you because what is first class? What are you, what are you talking about? What first class is what? What does that mean to you? I live a first class life if I put God first. Okay. When I heard that part, that's when I felt like I want to make a video on this. And I know, first of all, I used to say only 20 people are going to watch my video. Now I can say 100 people are going to watch my video, which is really cool. <laughs> it's a little growth. But it's like, okay, if I have Trisha Paytas in my freaking title, 100 people will see this video. So I felt like well, that's at least 100 people that'll hear this perspective. Um, when she said, as long as I put God first, um, it gave me the heebie-jeebies because it that is... Okay. That is what we call prosperity gospel. Mm. Let's see if there's like a Google definition for those who don't know what prosperity gospel is. It's, I mean, I relate it very heavily to American evangelical evangelicalism, but prosperity gospel is not um, exclusive to American Christianity. Um, prosperity gospel is global. Like 
literally anywhere there are Christians and capitalism, you will find prosperity gospel on every on every corner of the earth. On every corner of the earth that there is both capitalism and Christianity. You will find it. Prosperity. Girl, I can't even spell. I cannot even spell prosperity gospel. Prosperity theology is religious belief amongst some Protestant Christians that financial blessing and physical well-being are always the will of God. Okay, I'm just reading this very short snippet here on Wikipedia. So it's Wikipedia, but you can read it more about it on Wikipedia. Um, Joel Olstein is prosperity gospel, though he's not... In my opinion, he is not the most atrocious. He's not, he's not the most predatory of them because prosperity gospel can get very predatory. Mm -hmm. Like Joel Olstein's prosperity gospel, it really is. If you put God first, Trisha Paytas, you will have first class everything. And the problem with that, when it comes to Christianity, and I I'd wager as well Judaism, which I don't know what, what is she, is she doing Christian thing or is she doing the Jewish thing? I don't know. But anyway, the issue with that is in actuality, following God or following Christ did not lead to your well-being. Um, You know, for those who are Christian, you know that People who were defending Jesus Christ or following Jesus Christ, they were persecuted very harshly. Some were put to death, some were tortured, some were banished to live alone on an island for the rest of their life and go insane. Um, it's not fun. It's not fun. It was not fun. Like those days, those times back then, it was not fun to be a Christian. Um... So, and there are places today, right now, like literally right now, you could be sentenced sentenced to death, I believe, um, if you say you're a Christian. The point I'm trying to make here is putting God first or, you know, putting your faith first does not guarantee riches at all or your well-being. It doesn't. What it's supposed to guarantee is your after... Well, actually, you can't even guarantee your afterlife, but what it's supposed to help you achieve is peace. Um, peace, love, whatever you want to call it. And, and help you get closer to whatever type of afterlife you're trying to get after. That is what it's supposed to do. So when we talk about peace and love, that has nothing to do with your finances. Um, has nothing to do with your health. It is literally a state of mind and a state of being. So anyway, Joel Olstein is um, a prosperity gospel preacher Oh, Kenneth Copeland. He has a church in my area. I was just in Fort Worth. I was just in Fort Worth. He has a church in Fort Worth. This dude, this dude is something else, girl. This dude is something else. But he is like one of these preachers who, and I don't know all of these preachers, who will get on TV, smile, and tell you to pay $50 for this random piece of rag cloth. And if you pay $50, God will bless you tenfold. Meaning you'll get whatever 50 times 10 is, $500. And donate that. Donate that $500. And you'll be blessed tenfold again. Get 5000 Like, it's like this friggin' little scam. Like, they... Preachers literally are running scams and they get your money tax free. They don't pay no tax. That's the part that makes me so mad is these preachers run scams 
and they don't even have to pay tax. Like at least the regular scammers be paying tax in some kind of way. Yo, anyway. So that's what I would, when I heard her say when I put God first, I'm like, that's not how it works. That's not what, that's not what you get for putting God first. That's not what it's about. Let's continue. First class accommodations. I, I'm going first class to Maui. The other question is, aren't you already going first class? That's, that's why I'm really confused. Like, what do you mean? Aren't you already, like, even before all these affirmations, you, hadn't you been doing this? Maldives. No, I want to go to Maldives. Oh Israel. Austria, Hungary. Italy, Paris. First class to Bora Bora. First class to Tokyo. I would love it. I flew first class only once. We've, I was like, I just got to fly first class one of these days. International. Don't fly first class for domestic flights. What a waste, what a waste of your money. International. It was so awesome. They greet you by name. The food is great. free drinks like free alcohol I don't know if it's unlimited I didn't I didn't try my luck there because it was like I am sitting by myself I made nice conversation with um another dude who was in first class but you know like I'm by myself like oh, I don't need to get turned in the airplane <laughs> by myself um it was really nice it was really cool and I would love Got to put my bucket list to go first class uh, to Dubai or on Emirates, the Emirates airline. Anyway, I'm just saying, I relate. I want to go first class, totally. And then I will have a first class baby. But what does that mean? What is a first class baby? Any baby that you have is going to be first class to you. What does that mean? It has to mean something to her inside look at her face look at her eyes she's you can tell she's visualizing what is she visualizing the affirmation needs to mean something to you so if other people are reciting this affirmation that doesn't mean anything to us and a better affirmation for her would be like to affirm what good qualities will come from having the baby or what you the kind of life you hope to provide your baby or me i don't know something you know what else will be first class your life experiences your first class views you can have all the luxuries i will have all the luxuries in life if i put god first see i that didn't have <laughs> God and luxuries do not go hand in hand. No. If you put God first, if putting God first meant you got luxuries. There would be a lot of, there would, there would be a hell of a lot of people who would be, who would be living a better life than you. You, you wouldn't be living the kind of life you're living. And there are people who would, it just, it just doesn't even make sense. Like, just look at your life, look at your life and look at the life of other people from your church. Like, you can't say like, what are you going to say that? Well, you've been putting God first this whole time. And that's why you have all these luxuries. You have this huge house and this stupidly huge couch. And he, you have like a hundred crystallized tumblers. And you buy a $5,000 bag every week. 
You have a lot of luxuries. Are you going to say that you've been putting God first, way more first than everybody else? I just hate this mentality of like, like God is this piggy bank or God is this, you know, what's that called? You rub it and it comes out like a genie of the lamp. You know what I mean? Like, that's not what God, like, God is not a freaking genie of the lamp that you rub and you just bat your eyes. I put you first and he gives you luxuries. This line of thinking is very annoying and it, I mean, sure, like, if that's your spiritual belief, that's your spiritual belief, sure. Right. But, um, I am assuming she is talking about a Judeo Christian God and like, you don't even have to read very far into the Bible to see that the Judeo Christian God is not, he does not just provide luxuries just because you say you want them. Faith first, first class. The other thing too is um, I used to, back when I was really into hustle culture, hustle hard, I would listen to these guys who would talk about how they put their faith first and, and that's why they're rich. And it really gave me the impression that like, oh, rich people are good. Rich people are godly. Rich people, like, like it's just this extra, th if you're going to be elitist, w what a way to add an extra notch in the elitist agenda. I don't know what else to call it. Like, it's like they try to give this impression that rich people have something, not only do they have finances figured out but they also have like their spirituality figured out like they take the, there's this line in the bible that's like you'll know you'll know someone by the fruits they produce and they just take it to the next level They're, they just like they just think because they're rich that is they're showing that they they have god's favor that's the fruit that they're showing and it's, it's just so misleading because once you get to know some of, some of them, some of these rich people, you realize that they're, they're not good people. Like some of, some of these, some of these rich people who claim to put God first are not, they are not good people. They're not good human beings by measure of how you treat other people, which is important. will follow first class job first you class don't have grades. a job first class spirituality first class tickets i will find first class everywhere and anywhere i want to go for the rest of my life here first class to heaven what does that mean? What in the effing world? How do you go first class to heaven? You're either going there or you're not going there. Like there's no first, there's no coach, there's no economy seating. Unless we want to play this Catholic purgatory game, which is not Catholic. Yo, I'm just... I'm not even that religious. Like I'm not, I wouldn't consider myself a religious person. And I'm just so, <laughs> like I'm just making this face. Like, what are you saying? I just never, my, I've never heard that in my life before. First class to heaven. I've, I've never heard. Like I, I have never heard of that before. No. First class body, first class food. I will never have to worry 
about a price. You already don't oh, worry about a price. Through. Here's the, here's the other thing. She already does it. She's saying I'll never have to worry about a price. Probably what she means is the price of whatever food that I want is not going to impact my checking account. So I never have to worry about it. She does. She currently doesn't worry about it. Um, she might tell herself she worries about it because when it's time to pay a bill and maybe she doesn't have enough money and then she's like, oh man, I spent all my money on food. She's worried about it. But in the moment, she's not worried about it. She has already manifested not worrying about the price of food. She's already done it. So that's not the affirmation. She does. She's not... mm, that's not the affirmation that she's looking for because she's she's all she already doesn't worry about the price. I do that as well. I set a budget and I have a, a card that's just for food. So I just swipe that card until it doesn't swipe anymore. <laughs> I swipe that card until it doesn't swipe anymore. And I did that because I love that feeling of I want it. I bought it. You know what I mean? You may not have ever had like a rich auntie, but every now and then in life, I've experienced being with the rich auntie and that feeling of, oh, Udo, you like that bag. Udo, you want that bag? Don't worry. Go get it. Get it. I'll buy it for you. That feeling is just so, oh, 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 it's such a nice feeling, right? And now that I'm older, I kind of realize, because my mom would always be like, mm, so-and-so bought that for you? Mm. And I'll be like, why are you like, mm, that's so nice. But now, now I understand, like, I can see how a parent could find it insulting that another grown-up is giving their child nice things. I can see, I can see how that's an insult. I I kind of get it, but anyway, I digress. Um, the point is, she's already manifested this thing that she's trying to affirm. Actually, she's already manifested a lot of these things. So, I'm curious where it spawned from. I only surround myself with first class people. If you are going to live a first class life, you must only surround yourself with first class people and you yourself must be a first class top notch person. What the hell does that mean? That can mean so many things. Are we talking classes and elitist? Are we talking characteristic traits? Are we talking like minded people? I understand this. Um, the phrase, you are the five people you spend the most time with. I get that. I get birds of a feather flock together. Um, what is this definition of first class and being top notch? Because you're not, you're, by many people's opinion, you're not it. And you don't seem to hang around people who are it. So what does that mean? And again, this idea that you have to be a certain way, I don't like it. If I truly bought into this manifestation idea that I must be a certain way to get what I want, then there's so many things that I wanted that I never would have been able to have. I'm not okay with the subtle idea that who you are cannot have what you want. It's discrediting yourself. I'm sure we've all experienced that moment where you wanted something really badly. You worked really hard. It was really important to you and you didn't get it. Instead, the person who got it is the person who doesn't, who didn't even care. Like it could have been a grade, it could have been a, a, a role in the school play, whatever. But we've all experienced, it could have been a job promotion. We've all experienced where we got passed up for something that we thought we were perfect for it and then went to somebody that we felt was mediocre. Addison Ray, perfect example. Why is Addison Ray getting to star in Netflix films 
when she just copies dances made by people who are better entertainers than her. Right? Um, so this idea that you have to be a certain way to get a certain thing, I don't like it because we see in life, that's not actually what happens. Actually, what happens is you want something, you have the resources to achieve it, so then you get it. And it doesn't matter if you're a good person, if you're a bad person, if you're economy class person or a top-notch first-class person. It doesn't matter. All that matters is that you want something and you have the means to achieve it. And I feel like, like especially when it comes to dating, because so many girls, and I'm on Clubhouse sometimes, it just depends, girl. Like My anxiety has been off the charts lately, so I have not been on Clubhouse because you just got to protect your mental health. And there is a lot of tomfoolery on that app. Like there is too much tomfoolery. It's so stupid. It is so stupid. But anyway, um, it just breaks my heart when I hear these girls saying, I want a man who, you know, will treat me this way, that way. I want a man who earns a certain amount. I want, like they'll say, you know, the one or two things that they really want in a man. And then they'll say, but I got to work to get there first. I need to lose weight. I need to do this. I need to, I'm like, girl, no, you don't. I mean, do it. Like if you want to lose weight for yourself, for your health, do it. If you want to read more books for yourself, do it. Absolutely be self-improving. Become the person you want to be because that's who you want to be, not because that's what you think this magical hypothetical man wants. I don't I don't like this you have to be it because it's like you are in you are currently in a state of you don't have that thing that you want, right? And here's the thing that you want. And you're telling yourself, I me who I currently am has to meet whatever frequency of the thing I want. So I have to change myself to conform to this, right? But the thing is, when you're down here and you don't have the thing you want, who are you to dictate what you need to be to to get the thing you want? You know what I'm saying? Like, who are you to say, if I want to be the lead in the school musical, I have to be a better dancer? Who are you to say that? Because haven't there been leads who suck at dancing? You know what I mean? Like... Who, who are you to say, if I want to be a fa- rich and famous pop star, I have to be an amazing singer. Haven't there been rich and famous pop stars who can't sing? Hello, Selena Gomez. Like, haven't there been jaw-dropping, amazing singers who have no fan base? Like, who, who are you, the person who doesn't even have the thing that you want, to tell yourself you have to change to meet a an arbitrary standard that you just made up. You know what I mean? And so I just feel like that mentality it keeps it keeps women single, women who want to be with men and excuse it's not even a gender thing. It keeps people unhappy. It keeps people away from what they want. Okay. So maybe somebody might be saying, okay, well, then what's the solution? You know what? This is the kind of stuff that I go to bed and I just play it out in my mind. As of now, I feel like it's literally as simple as you want something, you gather the resources to achieve it, and, and then you, you will get the thing. The gathering resources part might be difficult <laughs> because maybe you have no idea what the resources are. Anyway, Ugh. I just had to get on that little rant. Person, I am first class because of my luxuries, my wealth, my health, but most importantly, how I treat people. How do you treat people? 
Whoa, wait a second. I just saw a clip of Trisha Paytas going on a podcast with Jordan Belfort, who if you don't know who Jordan Belfort is, Jordan Belfort is the dude that movie Wolf of Wall Street is based off of. By the way, that, I don't know if that's my, it used to be my favorite movie back when I was die hard, hustle, hustle hard culture. That was my favorite movie. I haven't seen it since my mental shift. I don't know if it would be my favorite movie anymore. But anyway, I I really enjoyed that movie. But that dude is a real dude. His name is Jordan Belfort. And she went on his podcast and she had the audacity to talk about Ethan's Tourette syndrome again. And she had the audacity to say, oh, he was upset that I was making fun of his Tourette's, but it was like, it was just a joke. Like, Trick, who the hell are you to say you treat people, that you treat people in any kind of decent manner? And how I love people, and I love people the way God loves people. No, you don't. No, you don't. If you love people the way God loves people, you wouldn't be in the kind of mess that you be in. No, you don't. Like, ew, ew. Y'all, this is why, mm, this is why I can't, mm -mm. this is why I stopped making Trisha Paytas videos and reaction videos because she, she, she pisses me off. Like, she pisses me off. Like, in the beginning of the video, you know, and I was going off on my rants, ew, I'm like, well, she's ignorant of what she's saying. But no, you cannot sit here and tell us that you love people the way God loves people. You don't even know who God is. No, 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 no. Let me not even get on that. Let me not even get on that. Everybody's spirituality is different. Okay, maybe she knows her God as she knows her God, but um, you don't you don't treat people well. God loves you so much. You are here for a reason. And you are meant to be first class. If you're sitting in coach right now, you will be first class. Say, I am first class. I deserve first class accommodations. And I will accept nothing less than first class. Even if you're in business right now, know that first class is literally just a few steps ahead. Literally. One, two. You are in first class. I deserve to be in first class. First class is absolutely beautiful. It's stunning. Everything about my life is first class. Because God comes first. And I treat everyone. She's really on that. I want to know. She went someplace. She went somewhere. Because when she... When Trisha keeps repeating things over and over, she learned, she learned it from... <laughs> it sounds like I'm talking about a child. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's, I'm not trying to even... I'm not even trying to be rude about it or funny, but like, yeah, when she keeps repeating something, she heard it from somewhere. So who did she hear it from? Did she get it from Joel Olstein? She watches Joel Olstein. Like she's into him. And I think that's, maybe that's where she got it from. Because everyone is in first class with me. We are all in first class with God and we are all in God's favor. Sometimes there may be a mishap. Sometimes the airline might put us in the wrong seat. They got something wrong. You're on standby. Mm -hmm. Even when you're in standby, you know you're first class. You know that's what your ticket says. You know that's where you belong. And that's what you deserve. And you just may be on a little hiatus, a little bump in the road. But you'll always hold that first class ticket in God's heart. And you'll always hold that first class ticket if you believe it. But believe it. You are first class. I am first class. Believe it. I believe it. I deserve it. And first class feels freaking good. And I'm thankful to be in first class. And I'm thankful to have a first class life. I am breathing, I am healthy, I am wealthy, I am happy, I am loved, I am inspiring, and I'm welcoming. Welcome to first class. Okay, so <clears throat> that aspect of believe it, isn't it, who, who kept saying that? Like, that reminds me of someone. I can't even spell, yo, I cannot spell. I cannot spell. Okay, whatever. I just feel like believe yeah. it, believe it, believe it. Yeah, don't believe it, then believe it, believe it, believe it, believe. Anyway, that aspect is why you say you. 
is why you're supposed to be saying the affirmations and all that stuff so that you do believe it. It's supposed to be hypnotizing your mind or infiltrating your subconscious, however you want to say it, whatever you want to say. Um, but if you're saying those things and you don't, then it's actually, it's actually working against you. I don't know if she, I don't know if she, maybe she, maybe she really does believe it. Maybe she doesn't, but that whole video and the premise that she kept repeating over and over is totally off. And this is why I get annoyed. I get annoyed. I get annoyed with all of this people who talk about this kind of stuff. I get annoyed with, um, who's this chick? I get annoyed with her. I resubscribe to her just so I can see, okay, what, what's up? But I have been unsubscribed for a long time. I get annoyed. I get annoyed with, well, this, this guy kind of, I don't know what he talking about sometimes. Like he just went. He just, he went somewhere, he went somewhere else. He went to a different land. But I get irritated because they're, they're talking the same nonsense without, without thinking. I don't know how to explain it. But, um, like I said in my other video, if you actually do want to learn about more about this stuff and learn it in a way that makes sense and you can feel like you're applying it correctly <laughs> and you're understanding the actual basic concept of it, just type Abraham Hicks in your little search bar and there is like literally decades of video footage, audio footage. People done made little cartoon snippets, you know, little 10 minute snippets. Like there's just so much. And if you're interested in actually diving into that stuff, I recommend them not. Trisha Paytas, thanks for watching. Um, leave a paw print emoji in the comments. So I know that you watched all the way to the end and I know you were here. I appreciate you so much. Until next time, much love, much luck. Peace out.